I was a witness to a homicide. On the 22nd of September, 2008, the very SWAT team that I founded in the 1970s killed my son-in-law in my presence. I went over it and over it in my head because it didn't make sense the way it went down. There were officers everywhere. I kept telling them, let me talk to Brian. I know I can calm this situation down. They said, absolutely not. They were in control and they were gonna handle the situation. The police are creating these circumstances. They're creating the volatility. They're creating the violence. They're creating the very thin margin for error. The premise that the cops are becoming more like the military. It is false. It's really me as a sheriff preparing a deputy with all the tools that I can give him to go into a situation where there's a high probability somebody will get shot. Police officers are receiving military weapons and equipment. And when you dress them up and you give them that mindset, it's not a surprise that they start acting in a militaristic way. make a mistake and shoot someone who isn't really a threat, they're always forgiven because it's the volatility of the situation. People on the receiving end of these raids aren't given that consideration. Whiskey 7, we're at 3268. Jackson, we got shots fired. We got officer hit. I need medical. I need additional units. I don't believe that for one minute Matthew knew that it was the police that was breaking into his home. There's no doubt in my mind that he knew exactly what he was doing and who he was firing at. These guys need to go home at night with their families just like the rest of us do. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Two people dead over what? What were they protecting us from? As I began to piece together the puzzle, it became an obsession into trying to find the truth. Why? Why did this happen? Who's making these decisions? The objective of our entire profession is to bring peace. Sometimes peace is purchased with violence. <laughs>